and welcome to the Mindful Making video podcast. You have landed here in Hornsby Heights, north of Sydney, Australia. My name is Jane and this episode number 41, as all the previous episodes will be about knitting and yarn and the peace, calm, uh, grounding that making with our hands give us. And before we start, I just want to acknowledge country. So I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I am recording from today. I am on Darug Kuringai land and I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. And I thank them for how they have preserved and lived in harmony with nature and respecting the country and respecting land. And I hope that we can just all learn a bit from all their wisdom and treat the nature around us with the respect that it deserves. So welcome to Mindful Making. Um, I hope you have your knitting project ready and that you have settled down with a cup of coffee or a tea and will enjoy the next, I usually say half an hour, 45 minutes or so with me and I'm so honoured that you have chosen to spend that time with me. Today we will uh, talk about, um, I have one finished object and I have another project with, which was a finished object. It's now uh, in the section of works in progress. Um, and then before we dive in, I just want to say a huge heartfelt Thank you to all um, your comments on the last video and um, all the support that you have given my latest design, which is the Breezy Summer Tea. I am so uh, totally blown away by all of you who have decided to knit it. I'm thrilled and I will just be looking forward to seeing all the beautiful summer teas. Um, that will pop up um, on Instagram, on feeds and pictures everywhere. So please tag Mindful Making so I can uh, follow along. I am just very curious to see uh, the beautiful yarns that you will choose and I hope you all get beautiful summer uh, teas worked in a lace weight yarn and I think a lot of of uh, those who have already knitted the summer tea is very happy about you know the light drapey fabric that it gives. Let me just show you a picture up here of the breezy summer tea if you have no clue of what I'm talking about and I will also just pull it from uh, my clothes rack over here. So this is the um, breezy summer tea worked in the round simple um, round yoke but the fabric is just everything it is work on a this i have worked this on a two uh, 75 millimeter needle so it is um you know fine kneading there are plenty of stitches but it's just knit stitches round and round so it's it it isn't too it doesn't take too long to complete it uh, and a rather, uh, you know, pleasant rhythmical knit where you, you know, your hands will do, do the work. So I got this tea out of one skein of 800 grams or 800 meters, not 800 grams. Uh, but it was a stretch. I have only a tiny bit left for this tea. Yeah, it is available uh, on mindfulmaking.com.au, my web shop there, and also on Ravelry, the breezy summer tea. While we are talking about um, my designs, the next uh, tea, which is also worked in a round and with a um, 
well, worked in the round top down with a round yoke construction. It is the gum knot chain. It is currently in test. So um, hopefully and soon we will see uh, new versions of, of this tea pop up um, and I will show them here and in the next episode. Well, I won't have them physical here, but I hope I could share some pictures with you next time. Um, the launch is planned for late July, so keep an eye out for that. The gum nuts is, it, it got its name from these sort of small knobs up here, which is basically a slip stitch pattern. Um, and then the main yarn is a beautiful cotton bamboo blend. No, merino, cotton merino bamboo blend by uh, Carola Down Under, hand dyed with natural dyes. I will tell you much more about this, the gum nut tea, uh, in the next episode. Today I'm trying to uh, stand up, um, so I've set it up at my, you know, um, standing desk. So uh, let's see how that works out. I like sort of the freedom to move around, uh, but hopefully it won't be too um, disturbing or too confusing for you. What I'm wearing today is the pink fizz uh, jumper. It's a design by Andrea Murray. It is a boxy jumper with a lace paneling down the sides here on both shoulders and also on the back. Let me insert a short video. I have shared it before, but um, you can see it in its full glory. about this um, this sweater this jumper initially I thought the sleeves were too long they sort of um, reached mid um, hand but as I'm wearing it it sort of creeps up and I, it's not crimping it's just it just pulls back and it's a perfect length perfect length I'm happy I didn't you know, unravel the um, the cuff and redid, redo it and shorten the sleeve because then it would have been short, too short. I finished this in January, so this was my uh, summer holiday project. A uh, bit warm uh, for the summer, but you know, this year we didn't have any well decent summer here in Australia it was raining 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 and cold so it was um, a, a good project for for this year and now as we are in winter here in Sydney it has just been perfect I've worn it a lot during the last couple of weeks the yarns that I have used for the pink fizz um, sweater is uh, super soft held together with Chichi Kaka, which is a 100% alpaca yarn. The uh, super soft color is called Sweet Pea and the Chichi Kaka um, alpaca is a Heather Rose. And let me just find the yarn so you can see them. Here is the uh, Sweet Pea. It has these, and I've talked about this before, it's, um, you know, there is a grey in, in 
in the strands and then there are yellow, orange, red and then this beautiful mauve color, soft pink. Beautiful yarn. Love this color. And then this is the Heather Rose, the Chichicaca Alpaca yarn. So these two together gives this fabric. I work this on a four millimeter needle. Yes, and a 375 on the ribbon. I have continued working uh, with the super soft yarn and I have worked in this color, which is, and uh, you know, the light might blow it out a bit. Just to see. It is called cinnamon. And it is again, uh, there are just uh, small variations throughout each strand. So there are browns, of course, browns, and then some um, uh, yellowy, orange, red here. And well, it looks really like cinnamon. So I've used uh, almost, no, not a full cone, but uh, used some yarn because I redid the green jumper that I showed last time. Uh, and if you want to see that, you uh, will have to go back to the uh, episode number 40 because now it is all unraveled. It will be another uh, design at some point. Um, but I loved the design, so I thought that I would use another yarn, so I chose the Super Soft in the color Cinnamon. And here it is. It is a wide, boxy uh, style set in sleeves with this panel of um, cable or the cable running down uh, the mid or center front, the entire body, and then ending in the ribbing up here in the neckline. The back is uh, just a stockinette, the sleeves are stockinette ending with a um, two by two ribbing. It is longer in the back uh, with short rows. So I'm pretty pleased with this uh, and it doesn't it doesn't show um, well it, it blows out a bit with the light uh, from the window. but I love this panel in the front. I love the relaxed fit. It is not too long here, but I have made the sleeves too wide. So I will need to, I think I will need to reduce this size. So I basically have to pull back, unravel back to here and then redo it. But and then I might opt for a, um, a double layered uh, neckline, so it's just folded back. But otherwise, this is ready to be written up in a pattern. But when it will be available, who knows? Who knows? I love uh, this cable. It is from... Um, an Oregon's book, source book of cables that I have found it. And um, I just love the graphic structure of this cable down, um, down the front. Simple uh, and elegant. And then in a relaxed, you know, style. So it just, you know, throw over a pair of jeans or if it gets cold your you know dress or at winter indoors 
I used, let me just check how much yarn I used for this. Uh, yeah, 270 gram. So it's 1600, approximately 1600 meters. But this will be a new design coming someday. Uh, so uh, uh, keep your eyes uh, out for that. Love the color. It is worked single stranded on a 375. It has not been washed yet. So the stitches hasn't settled and it hasn't, you know, it blooms, the yarn blooms um, after washing. Next time, maybe uh, I might have, uh, you know, adjusted the sleeves, maybe because I am going away though. Or next time again, when we um, touch base again, um, I will show you how it looks when it has been washed and the ends woven in. I finished this only a few days ago. Very pleased. And you know, I like the long stretches of stocking it. And then just, you know, with this little uh, cable that just had a bit of um, engagement and entertainment, um, not entertainment, but it uh, was, yeah, entertaining. Uh, on each round and then you just could relax for the rest and uh, knitting in the round the, the the I actually on this one for the sleeves I added uh, sticking stitches so I continued knitting knitting round and then I cut open for um, oh that means I may not be able to redo this Maybe I can. Now, anyway, otherwise I will do something else or just adjust the sleeve. Mostly this sleeve, which is somehow bigger than this one. Anyway, more to come on this. So uh, yeah. what it will be called, I don't know yet. Initially I had forest floor, but um, it will be something else now. Yeah, so there may be a call out again for uh, name suggestions. You are excellent in coming up with beautiful, wonderful names uh, that I couldn't have thought of myself. Let's see, next time maybe. On the needles is another jumper worked in super soft. Holzkan, I have um, I've, I've gravitated to that yarn not only because I have a lot of it in my stash, but it's just this um, a bit rustic, um, natural feel of the yarn, and just because the colors are just beautiful. You might recognize from if you have seen the last few episodes, you might recognize this uh, blue jumper that I knitted for my husband. I think I, I, I talked about it in the last episode and uh, the, the one before that. I couldn't get the neckline to work. He, it sort of sat up here, you know, almost, he felt like he was being, that he was choking um, in the jumper. So, I couldn't fix it. So this jumper turned into this. Yeah, all gone, all back into its starting point, but with a bit of a curly texture. And I am uh, now working on uh, its second time, but from another pattern so I'm not redoing the same but I really like the saddle shoulder construction and because of the fit around his shoulders so I am doing that again so here we are it will blow out again 
nice dark blue and because it has been washed it doesn't bleed onto my fingers so my fingers are not blue anymore um, you can say that I didn't bother uh, straightening the yarn or um, so it's still a bit sort of curly I assume and I hope and it will <laughs> uh, even out when it is uh, when I'm done and it's uh, washed and blocked again yeah not much to say about this apart from the color which is the um, vintage heather again from Holzgarn in the super soft um, it's a light fingering weight. I am again knitting it with just one strand on a 375 millimeter. It gives a warm but not too thick fabric. Ideal for wearing to the office, for wearing um, to and from the office. Um, and of course, indoors now in the winter in Australia, where it can get pretty cold because of the houses not being insulated. So if you have 14 degrees outside, you almost you have 16 inside. And that is cold when you are sitting all day, you know, working on your computer. So we need the woolen jumpers, the woolen socks here during winter. Uh, started this I uh, started this on the 10th of June and today it is what day is it today it is the 18th of June it's Saturday 18th of June 2022 who knows if you may watch this uh, way into the future so this was actually yes this particular day in 2022 uh, love it, love it, love it. Again, it's just round, round, round. Uh, I have a sense for, for that at the moment where it's just, I, I can just relax while knitting, the hands do their thing. I can just focus on my breathing. I can focus on the yarn, you know, running through my hands, the needles and just the stitches and the movements of the hands. Or I could let the hands run and read a book or watch a TV show, watch a podcasts, which I enjoy or have a lovely conversation with other knitting friends. In relation to that, um, we had the Worldwide Knit in Public Day last weekend on the 11th of June. We are a group of uh, local knitters who meet up um, almost every fortnight at a local cafe. And of course, we also gathered for world, Worldwide Knit in Public Day. Uh, and let me uh, just insert just a short snippet of uh, hands and knitting and the different projects that the group was working on. working on uh, this uh, jumper and I basically started I had just made 
um, the, uh, the shoulder little squares and started then from, um, from building the back and the front. The pattern that I'm using for, for this version of the saddle shoulder is from this book, which is uh, Anne Butt, um, where she has, you know, uh, different constructions and different gauges, and then you can, you know, select your gauge and the size, and then work through a basic uh, pattern. So I chose uh, this instead of um, the baseball jersey that I, I uh, worked before, which didn't work. This uh, the um, this didn't the neckline didn't work. So this is how this is how uh, it's uh, the pages are set up. So you choose your gauge, and then it's a lot of numbers. Um, I. I'm working size 42, 44 for my husband and it's a 25 stitch gauge. If you are um, interested, this is a wonderful resource book as well for, you know, as I said, basic designs. You can use any yarn you might have. If it's a larger gauge or a um, smaller gauge, so it's uh, from between three stitches to seven stitches per inch, so per two and a half centimeter. And then it gives all the numbers that you need for, for knitting through these, um, these different garments in here. There are um, saddle shoulder, racklin, round yoke, set in sleeve. Yeah. So it's uh, top down, all of them. It does require a bit of just, you know, finding your right spot to follow the pattern. It's not as easy as a written pattern where you, where you, it's just written out for you. Um, yeah, top down sweaters by Anne Bott. This, um, uh, the saddle shoulder jumper for my husband is what I'm mainly working on at the moment. I hope that I can finish it before uh, I leave on holiday. My daughter and I are going to Denmark on the 2nd of July. So in two weeks time, we will be up flying. First time in five years going back to my um, home country. Well, Australia is home as well, uh, but my um, mother country, is that what you say as well? Uh, so it's been five years and I'm looking very much forward to that. So uh, in preparation for that trip, the, one of the, uh, the, the first thing I do and I've done is to plan what will be my knitting projects that I can bring on the plane. And I have started a project, but it will just uh, rest until I'm uh, on the plane and then it will be brought out again. But let me show you what it is. During our uh, um, holiday, we will uh, go to a wedding, my nephew's wedding in Norway. Uh, it is summer. I know the dress that I will be wearing and it has a, um, so it's sleeveless. Let me just insert a picture of me wearing the dress up here so that it's a dark green and uh, it is summer, but it can be chilly. So I thought I need a shawl that uh, suits uh, that dress. And I had, oh yeah, this amazing yarn sitting in my stash. Beautiful gray green pockets of a uh, bit of blue pockets. Uh, there is a bit of black bit of darker olive green. So it's an olive gray 
green. It is from Union Fiber. It is from New Zealand. It's a lace weight yarn. It is, let me just see the blend. It is 50 silk, 50 merino. Super duper soft. And I have decided to cast on a Sarissa shawl. Oh, and it's uh, all bundled up, of course. You can't see it. So here is the start of the Sarissa shawl. Uh, it is worked on a four millimeter needle. So it's a pretty loose gauge, so, gauge, so it's quite, um, well, it's soft and drapey and open. And then I will pair it with a mohair. So I've bought this um, silk mohair. So I think that would be beautiful together in the Sarissa shawl. I will just insert again a picture of the final shawl so you can see that it will be wedges of the um, fingering weight yarn and then stripes in between with the um, with the silk mohair and then um, finishing off with a, a lace border to give it a bit of um, feminine fem femininity feminine look to it i have it over here on the um, on the rack as well it will be this um, shawl then in in these colors yeah I think it will be very very pretty so that will be my uh, project on uh, for the plane. And of course I need to finish it before uh, the wedding. So um, that will be my holiday uh, project. And going, uh, you know, bringing knitting on the plane. Um, I thought, you know, I could bring these wooden needles this, these are the Knit Pro um, Symphony, but actually the the this this yarn, the lace weight sort of gets not stuck, but there are a bit unevenness here with the um, where it transitions from wood to um, to the metal, and also where um, the wire is attached. So it's not. Mm, not so easy and not the pleasure that I want it to be to knit. So uh, when a friend of mine have lent me some bamboo needles, so uh, I am all prepared. I might uh, take both should one, uh, you know, crack. So uh, because that would be the worst, you know, sitting in, in a 30 hour travel, all in all with no knitting. I may need, nah, one project would be enough, huh? Although it's just, um, it's just garter stitch throughout. I won't finish it on, on the plane, you think? Nah. nah, we have, we have 13 hours in Bangkok on the way, um, but we might try to get a, um, a room so we can just lie down for a sleep um, instead of just hanging in a cafeteria somewhere. Awful. But isn't it beautiful? Isn't it beautiful? The name of uh, the color is Riverbed. She doesn't have any of these in her shop at the moment. Uh, I, bought, I bought these, well, it's probably four years ago now. And I've just been looking out for the right project and occasion to use it. And this seems just perfect for a Sarissa as a wedding shawl. I'm actually, uh, now I just want to sit down and knit this. 
because it's just so soft. Can't wait for the plane. Just sitting there for hours and watching a movie and knitting. I will take, um, I will prepare another project to go with me in the suitcase, but otherwise it will just be that because there are plenty of yarn in Denmark and I'm sure that my suitcase will um, barely be able to close when I go back with all the yarn that I will and buy and bring home. What I thought, though, uh, that I would continue my um, venture into lace weight yarn. So this is another color of Union Fiber. Yeah, I love her um, her coloring of yarn and her dye. This is called Simi Precious. It is the same blend of 50% silk and 50% a superwash merino, a lace weight, uh, 700 meters in this. And I thought that I would make another breezy summer tea in this colorway. Isn't it pretty on a white or creamy base? And then it has blue, brown, orange, green, everything. But these muted earthy tones in it. It would be very pretty for a uh, Sarissa shawl as well. Could have chosen this yarn for that. Uh, I might need a um, a solid color for the for the ribbing. I thought for the uh, the ribbing and for the edging and for the hem to use either this uh, white or This one over here, maybe this, which is called, I can't remember. Anyway, these are coast yarns. So they are a light fingering weight. They are 50% uh, merino and cotton, 50% cotton. But I think the, this latter would work really well. It's a nice sort of tonal. Yeah, it will be this, it will be that. There we go, I will bring that. And then there will be a lot of yarn going back with me in my suitcase, hopefully. And I will um, endeavor to um, just bring my camera, well, basically the phone and um, record some footage for you that I can show you next time around. So, um, yeah. Another breezy summer tea in this beautiful combo. For the trip to Denmark, I have, um, well, we are there two, two weeks and I have totally laid out itinerary of plans where we will be. It is a bit like, it's not, well, Going, going back to visit family and friends, it's lovely and beautiful and I'm looking very much forward to it, but it's also, the, you just want to, to make the most of it. So um, maybe I need an extra holiday when coming back. So we will start in Olbo. Well, we will land in Copenhagen, drive up to Olbo, be there a, a few days in the beginning of July, I think from the 3rd of July to 7th of July and then we will drive down Jutland to Bade, which where my mum lives and visit her. Then we will go to Umro and, and stay there for a day and from there. So that will be around the 8th, 9th of July and then across to Ellerød and Copenhagen and we will stay there until the 15th of July and then to Norway to Stavanger for the wedding the, uh, which is the 16th of July and then I will fly back to Copenhagen the 18th and on the plane to Sydney from there. So uh, you know it's very um, very planned out but if you are 
you dear Danish viewers, um, if you are around, maybe we can find a time to catch up in a yarn shop somewhere or a cafe and um, uh, set out a time for when we can meet. Well, I don't have um, a lot of options, so I'll just be, you know, in a certain day. But if you are around, Olbo, Varde, and then Umbro. Uh, so if you, and then Copenhagen. So if you are around those times, send me a message either below or a direct message on Instagram where my name is Mindful Making. And while we are names, you can find um, my knitting projects on my Ravelry project page and I am Mindful Making AU where you also have the pattern shop um, with the Sarissa Breezy Summer Tea as I've talked about today. Um, but if you are around those days, um, maybe we could, if I have the capacity, catch up uh, for a cup of coffee and a knit together. So for my Danish viewers, um, send me a message um, if you are around. A lot of things is, are happening and I've been preparing for that trip for a long time and I'm always getting a bit, oh, can we get away so can we do it now because I've been thinking about it a lot uh, and now it's the final preparations um, and I hope there will be summer up there and uh, oh, I have to watch, start watching the weather forecast to see if it's the uh, light linen dresses and um, swimwear or if I need to to bring my um, my puffy coat but let's see <laughs> okay um, I have bought a few um, skeins of yarn since we last spoke I have showed you um, one of the purchases already which were the uh, the silk mohair for the Sarissa shawl, I bought a few skeins of those. I will use some of them for, for the shawl, but then I have some silk mohair that I can use for other projects. Then I saw Circus Tonic Handmade in a um, Instagram post, well, it's probably a month or six weeks ago talking about a fade that she has uh, dyed up and is working with Hoki Locatelli on a new design that uses that fade and I just had to have it. So immediately I was just in ordering, sort of it was a pre-order and now I have received it. It may, it is in a plastic bag and it may crinkle a bit so apologies for, for that noise. Here it is. Can you see why I had to have it? Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful brown, pink, soft colors. Hoki Locatelli is working on a, a design utilizing the, the um, fade like this. So the darkest um, towards the bottom and a, a boxy with sort of stripes and lace in between as far as I have seen. I think she talks about it in one of her latest journals. I might um, use it for that, the yarn, or I might um, maybe knit up the spectre. And I'll just put up a picture of the spectre here and again then have, have it running up from dark to light. Uh, that would be a beautiful jump as well. But I think I this 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 yarn will just stay and be a, um, a decoration for a while. Just a, you know, walk around and just look at it and uh, look at it with my hands for a while. And then special occasion, maybe in the um, summer break or who knows. I will pull it out and start a project with this beautiful fade. Circus Tonic uh, is a local, well, not a local, but Australian, Australian dyer. 
she um that's beautiful yarn this is a super soft merino and 50 silk so again a drapey yarn yeah well isn't it beautiful That is it for the uh, creative knitting related content. Thank you so much for being with me for, for this time and um, joining in on the Mindful Making podcast. If, um, if you like it, please subscribe and maybe check out Tick the Bill so you get notified when there is a new episode. I uh, record approximately every month uh, and you know uh, what I've been talking about you can find a link below in the description box you can find a link to my website which is mindfulmaking.com.au where I will where I have a blog post that it has all the show notes for this episode and where I list and link to all um, yarns and patterns I have talked about today. And thank you for joining me so far. Uh, I thought I would just grab my knitting and then uh, we could talk a bit of uh, sort of life stuff with um, beyond the upcoming travel. If you're not interested in that, um, that's fine. And uh, hopefully I'll see you next time. But let's just sit and knit for a bit. <laughs> ah, well, I would just stand and it is quite, um, well, I like standing up. So, um, so here is the, uh, the blue knitting that I'm working on. In um, sort of what has happened in life and family, so my, um, my oldest son, he is studying in Denmark. Well, he is 22 and studying in Copenhagen. He has just completed first semester exams and uh, he is pleased. He hasn't received the results yet, of course, but um, he was pleased with his effort. He is now in the States, in Chicago. He uh, plays Pokemon cards, so he is over there for an international tournament. Yeah, it's amazing. And then he will uh, catch up with his Australian friends. I, I just find it amazing, you know, that you can connect worldwide and then meet up or just, you know, get that connection through, um, it could be games and also like we have here on on the podcast and the mindful making community i find it amazing love it love it love it he will uh, come and pick us up uh, in the airport when we land on the 3rd of july and then uh, we will spend some valuable time together i'm looking very much forward to that my daughter has also completed her exams for this semester um, and she is now in her, um, she has a, a decent break. So after we, our holiday in Denmark, she will continue and uh, travel with a friend to uh, Lisbon, Lisbon and Barcelona, and then return back two weeks after me. So I will fly back alone. Uh, and our youngest son, he has also had some uh, tests. He is uh, in year 11. And so he has to have some significant tests of maths and chemistry and physics. But he's doing really well. Um, my husband is sick with flu, not well, fever, coughing. I just hope that uh, I won't get sick. It will be a damn if, uh, you know. Oh, anyway. I hope all the international travel is all right and no, um, you know, that you don't have these negative COVID tests. And of course, you will have to wear masks and stuff. And when my husband traveled, he has been to Croatia last month. There was nothing, nothing. 
um, when you were vaccinated and we are. So um, hopefully that will um, turn out well and easy. But what I also wanted to talk about was a bit of some reflections on age and uh, women's health. Uh, and maybe this is, uh, this is, um, it is always dangerous to talk about something personal, but lately I've just noticed, you know, as women, we go through, um, you know, start, you know, girls, puberty, women, birth, childbirth, motherhood. Uh, and now I think, well, I am going through menopause and I, over the last six months, I've just noticed how my body and weight has changed and it has impacted me quite significantly. I think I've gained eight, 10 kilo over the last half year. And I noticed specifically around Christmas, not only due to the excessive eating and a lot of food and celebrations over Christmas, but it's just that sense of the body just working in a different way. And suddenly I had, um, you know, extra skin, not extra skin, but you could just feel um, more bulk. And I've never had that in my entire life. And it has affected me a lot, it's sort of on my identity. And I know, you know, you might say, oh, you, it's nothing. And, but for me, it is. So we have just, been reflecting a lot of this about age and changes in the body. I have to be careful of exercising more and I probably haven't exercised. So that is what has sort of started to um, extra body fat and um, starting to settle and eating less because the metabolism just goes down. So I can't eat as much as I did before. Um, and I need to um, go out for a walk more frequently. So but yeah, anyway, I've just had a lot of thoughts around body, aging, identity uh, lately. Um, and I think more sort of just getting used to this new part of life um, not that the body changes as such but just being comfortable with how it is right now and maybe it is an opportunity to uh, to renew my wardrobe because there's not that much clothes that i can wear <laughs> anymore a lot of well i can't wear my trousers and uh, working from home it's just been a lot of you know active wear and um, yoga pants and uh, and I'm wearing yoga pants today as well. Uh, I can't wear my the jeans that is sitting in my closet at the moment. Um, no, it doesn't. But then I, maybe there is an opportunity to go out and uh, not necessarily just buy everything, but just redefine what do I want to wear now. So I'm, I'm actually, while I'm talking about it, I'm looking looking forward to that. So just redefining um, not who I am, but how I dress. And that's also where our knitwear comes in. Um, that I previously liked a lot of slim fitted. Um, now I'm more into a bit more that has a bit more ease, positive ease. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that was just a bit on the uh, my personal life reflections. Uh, happy to hear your thoughts and um, how you cope with body changing and what you do about it, if you do anything, or is it, you know, this about accepting this is part of life. And of course I accept this part of life, but it's not just to lean back and yeah. And then again, all this celebration of youth. What about the wisdom of years? What about, yeah, anyway. 
let's see if this even makes it into the final podcast. Thank you so much for uh, joining me today in um, this number 41 video on the Mindful Making channel. It's been an absolute pleasure. I am looking so much forward to seeing you again after our holiday in Denmark and in Norway. So I hope you are well and that you are enjoying summer and summer holidays if you're in the Northern Hemisphere or we will move into a school um, break here in Australia as well, the winter break. So wherever you are, enjoy what is there. Enjoy summer, enjoy winter, enjoy you and enjoy your knitting. Thank you. Bye-bye.